What's up everyone, CB Monty here, back with another video. Now when it comes to maintaining our computer, most of us are really good with the hardware side. Keeping the systems clean, replacing thermal compound, blowing out all the dust and stuff like that, a lot of us are definitely on point. But how do we maintain the software to also to have a good experience? So today we'll be going over a few points in keeping your computer running just like new. Now just like cleaning your PC, going ahead and well optimizing your software and maintaining the software side should be done really regularly. Personally, I do this kind of thing every single month, usually at the start or the end, depending on what's going on, uh, and usually I'm just fine with my computers, whether it be my desktops, my laptops, tablets, or just about anything else that runs a Windows operating system is what I'll do this on. Now, when it comes to Macs, iOS devices, Android devices, and stuff like that, things can get a little bit different, so do let me know down in the comments sections if you want to see dedicated videos for those particular platforms. But today, we're focusing on mainly PCs running Windows 10, which can also to be applied to Windows 8, 7, Vista, and all those other things. So let's kick things off with tip number one, and that is removing all unneeded and unnecessarily files and also to software. These kind of things can clog up your SSD if you are running an SSD, or fill up your hard drive and just really not leave you with a lot of space. Whether you're going on holidays and you want to transfer some photos to your laptops or something like that, having a full drive really isn't that great. And this can also to affect on the performance side when it comes to SSDs as well when SSDs fill up to sort of 80 and 90% or higher, they can actually slow down in some cases, giving you worse performance. That's why you'll see a lot of time in reviews when people do benchmarks, they'll have the drives just about empty, so there's nothing on there that can slow the drive down. So if your SSD is at 80, 85, 90%, you may want to try emptying that guy and you may see some slight performance. It may not be extremely noticeable, but in some cases can definitely help. And it also too can help in terms of things like startup, which we'll touch on in a moment and just general use case of the computer as now you won't be having files everywhere and also too it'll just be a much cleaner experience when you are looking for stuff and doing things like searching through the start menu will be a lot faster as indexing can be completed a lot faster. Tip number two is probably a really obvious one but just do a virus or malware scan with your chosen piece of software. Whether it's Windows Defender, Malwarebytes, AVG or any of the others on the market, doing some sort of full scan on your system is really really important as the last thing you want to do is be carrying around viruses and stuff like that on your laptop or slowing yourself down in games with malware and stuff like that. It's just really great to do at least once a month. Now a lot of these softwares do go ahead and run things in the background and run incremental scans once a week, once every few days and stuff like that, but it's good to do a complete custom full scan at least once a month on your system which is what you'll do here. If you are using Windows Defender built into Windows 10 it is an extremely process to do, just open up the software and hit full scan and off you are ready to go. However if you are using a different piece of software, you may want to look into it a little bit as it is important to make sure you scan every single part of the drive. Now this process can take a bit of time as we're going to be scanning everything on the system so do leave yourself with plenty of time but overall should be really easy to do. Tip number three, whilst it may not exactly be something to optimize your system, just do a file backup to an external drive, NAS or server because it is extremely important. If you're especially running a laptop type of device, it's extremely important to go ahead and make sure you have a second copy of your files. If it's a desktop, you're a little bit less likely to lose them if your desktop goes missing, which is really not going to happen unless someone does break into your house. But at the end of the day, especially if you are running a laptop, going ahead and having a second copy of not only your files, but a full system image can be extremely helpful. Whether you're just going ahead and playing around with software or again, you do accidentally lose the computer, having a simple backup is really, really important. This is also too really handy as if you want to go ahead and do a full system backup and then wipe your computer for even better performance, you still have all your information and data on your backup and you've still also too got a nice performing computer. So that is something you may want to take into consideration, but a backup is extremely important. Tip number four, check your startup applications. Windows 10 and even Windows 8 and 8.1 for that matter, make it extremely easy to go ahead and do this. Open up Task Manager and even I can do it right now, just go over straight to Startup inside of Task Manager and disable whatever you don't need or put onto a delay, things that you may need a little bit later, but don't need, especially when you are starting on a computer. This can increase 
startup performance and overall just making your computer run just that little bit better and especially if you are turning your computer on and off or putting it to sleep or hibernating quite a lot, going ahead and doing this can be really, really helpful. For me personally, I was able to save five seconds on my startup time on my laptop, which went from about a 15 second boot time before I could actually get to an application down to 10 seconds, which was extremely fast. And if you are running a mechanical hard drive, things can be improved so much more than what I achieved here. So going ahead and checking your startup files and making sure there's not junk and random applications in there can be really helpful too. However, do keep in mind to not accidentally disable anything you're not really sure about. If you're not sure about it, do a Google search. If it doesn't seem that important, well then you can probably disable it. But at the same time, just like with messing around with those files, the last thing you want to go ahead and do is disable something that might actually stop your computer functioning. So do make note of what you are disabling so if something does go wrong, you can re-enable it and continue using your system. Tip number five, do a disk defrag if you are running a hard drive or execute the trim command if you're running an SSD. Now most Windows 10 installs, in fact just about every Windows 10 installs and some editions of Windows 8 actually have this built in where they'll automatically run a trim or automatically run a disk uh, defrag in the background from time to time, which can be really helpful but going ahead and doing it manually yourself is the best thing to do. Go ahead and open up the little utility that Windows does provide and you can go ahead and run it here. If you are running a hard drive, it will do a standard disk defrag. However, if you are running an SSD, Windows has definitely learned from the past where it used to actually damage your SSD, but now what it does is it runs the trim command, so you should be practically fine at that. However, if you want to be more sure you're not actually damaging your drive, go ahead and take a look into the trim command and how to execute it on your system. But the best way to go ahead and keep your drive running at its optimum is just going ahead and optimizing it through this little program right here and overall should be pretty handy. And tip number six is actually kind of a weird one. Up until now we've actually had to do something with our system but tip number six gets a little bit weird and this is something that I personally discovered myself and haven't seen too much around so do let me know down in the comments section if you've found this out for yourself but plug your computer into a power source if you are using a laptop or if you are using a desktop you can kind of well you already keep it plugged in but go ahead and set the computer to high performance mode, make sure it will not go to sleep and keep the screen on and just let it sit there on high performance mode, don't touch the keyboard or mouse and after 10 to 15 minutes you'll actually notice the CPU and sometimes in some cases the GPU, hard drive and RAM all start to ramp up and do things in the background. Now at this stage I haven't exactly fully figured out what Windows is actually doing but from what I've kind of worked out so far it seems to index files, goes ahead and moves stuffs around and just optimizes the system to be a lot more responsive even reactive for when you are using it. Basically what you're doing here is setting the computer to high performance mode so it will allow background tasks to run and then just letting the computer idle to actually well start executing those background tasks and overall get your system going. For example this clip is one that I recorded last night when I was allowing my computer to do this. As we can see here the CPU was absolutely maxing out even though I was not touching the system or running anything the computer was just maxing out doing some background optimization tasks. After it did that that it was just that little bit more snappy and responsive. It wasn't really a huge amount of snappy and responsiveness but at the end of the day, it was a nice little bump here. So if you are running a laptop or a lower powered device, this can really help you here. However, on the desktop side, I've noticed this to be less of a concern as desktop CPUs and desktop processors are just more powerful in general. And also too, they are basically plugged into the wall. So having these background tasks run at any time isn't too much of a problem. But if you are running a thin and light, a laptop like I am, tablet or anything like that, going ahead, setting it to high performance mode and just letting it idle and sit there and letting the CPU ramp up and all that kind of stuff actually gives you a little bit of performance. Again, I don't fully know exactly what's going on, but it seems to be optimizing it and doing some background tasks, which I guess isn't half that bad. And if we go ahead and do this every single month, you should find yourself a really nice and well-performing computer. I can say after benchmarking this system right here, the Dell XPS 15, it is only one second slower on boot up than when I first installed all the programs and ran it for the first time when I took it out of the box. So after about a year and almost a half at this point, only lose one second of boot time and overall still being extremely snappy 
is definitely one well-maintained computer. So there we go, that is our six little tips to go ahead and help your computer run just that little bit better. None of these tips try to give you any more FPS in games and as the computer decides to go sleep, nah, it's gonna wake up right there. Uh, none of these tips actually will go ahead and give you extreme performance increases. So if you are suffering from slow hard drives or slow operating system in general, you may need to look into other tasks, but doing these little tips like this will allow your computer just to stay that new feeling just that little bit longer and overall should give you a fairly long lifespan out of your PC there. Otherwise guys, let me know down in the comment sections about your tips and tricks that you use. Do you use different ones? Do you sort of do the same as what I do each month or do you do something different? Let me know again down in the comments section. Otherwise guys, thanks for watching and I'll catch you all in the next one.